In the previous sections of this chapter, we mentioned several times that trees can be used in database systems. Uh, while that's true, don't forget that a database is typically a very large data storage system. So if you try to store all records in a tree, the tree will not fit in memory. One solution that you can find would be storing the nodes in the tree in, uh, at, on the disk rather than uh, inside a tree. But then when you try to access a node in the tree, the next node, you will have to make a new disk access, which would be typically a very slow process. So in this section, we're going to uh, focus on the solution to this problem, which is the B trees. So uh, B trees are uh, tailored for applications where the tree is too low to fit in the memory. Remember that the CPU operations are typically much, much faster compared to disk operations uh, it, by a factor of like several thousands. Of course, if you use newer disk technologies like SSD disks, uh, disk access is faster compared to the traditional rotational disks, but still compared to the CPU, a disk operation is typically very, very slow, even for an SSD disk. Therefore, we would like to utilize our CPU uh, better uh, and therefore uh, we would try to minimize the number of disk accesses. Now, if you store uh, the nodes uh, on the disk, as I mentioned, uh, each uh, level change, when you go to the child uh, nodes on, in a tree, as you go down uh, in the tree, at each level, you would require a new disk access and we said this is uh, quite slow. So one solution could be to keep at least the root and the top few levels of the tree uh, in the memory. Remember that the tree is somewhat like a triangle shape. Therefore, the top levels are uh, the top levels contain fewer elements, fewer nodes. So it would be reasonable to store the top levels in the memory, but you cannot store the whole tree in the memory, as I said, if the tree is too large. An alternative uh, to the binary search trees we discussed, whether it is balanced or not, uh, would be making use of the B trees as we are going to discuss now. So till now we assume that each node uh, in the tree uh, uh, contained the data, it was storing data, except for the case of radix trees, where uh, part of the key was actually stored in the path that leads to that node. But beyond the key, uh, we were still assuming that all information uh, about that data item was stored in the uh, tree. What we mean by that uh, data storage is the following. For example, consider uh, a case where we are trying to store the information about uh, all students. Then each node in the tree would correspond to a different student. And when you come to that node, you would find all information about the student, like the uh, beyond the ID of the student, you would be able to find the name of the student, uh, his or her address, email address, courses uh, the student has been taking, the scores from all those courses, whatever kind of information you could be storing about the student. Now, in the case of B3, we're doing something uh, different. What we're doing is we're storing the data, not in the nodes in the tree, but only, uh, so not in the inter uh, interior nodes uh, between the root and the leaves, but only at the nodes in the leaves. So the internal nodes, do not keep any data, except for the keys, maybe. But the task of the internal nodes is to guide you towards the correct uh, leaf node. And when you reach that leaf node, you will find the information you are searching for at the leaf node. So a search should always terminate at the leaf node, in other words. We'll come to this in a few slides. Uh, now, B3s 
could be more general than what we discuss here. Uh, but for the sake of simplicity in this section, we will assume that all leaves in our B trees are at the same level. As I mentioned, in fact, you can have B trees where they are not all at the same level. So consider a binary search tree which is slightly modified than what we did uh, earlier. This tree, actually, if you look at only, uh, sorry, if you look at only this portion of the tree, which is composed of only the internal nodes, this is actually equivalent to a tree like this. We have 12 and 40 as the children of 20, 12 as 8 and 17 and 40 has 33 and 45. Uh, remember these are the internal nodes or also called the interior nodes and these are the leaves or the leaf nodes. Okay so what we have in here is uh, the tree composed of the interior nodes direct us towards the correct leaf node and when we reach the leaf node we find uh, what we're searching for so the basic idea is this is still a binary search tree what you're searching for should be in this tree for example if you were searching for 29 you would compare 29 with 20 it's larger so you follow the right link then the left link and when you come to 33 this is the end of the tree composed of interior nodes now we come to the leaf nodes and comparing 29 against 33 says follow the left link so it will take us to a different type of node where we have several items and we will find what we are searching for in the second order here okay so the tree is actually as i have drawn here the strange notation here actually corresponds to the same thing. It's just we here store uh, the key value 20 and we need two links to the left and right children. And those uh, links are shown as separate boxes here. And soon it will be uh, it will make more sense in the following slides why we're drawing them as separate boxes. One thing to note, one important important thing to note here is I already mentioned that, but let me uh, repeat it. What you're storing in these interior nodes are not the full records. So here you just have the key, like the student ID. You would have only that information, no other information about that student. The full record for the student with ID 20 is here. So in the leaves, what you have in here is not just a number. For the sake of simplicity in the figure here, you just see it as a number. But in reality, what you have here will be a full record for item with key value 20. Okay, so this is another record. This time for the uh, item with key value 29 and this one's for 27. So that means actually the leaf here, it's just drawn as a small box here, but in reality it will be a huge uh, data item there or uh, a data structure. For example, you can consider that to be an array of, uh, say, objects of type student. Okay, so if the information about each student takes uh, one kilobytes of uh, disk space, then the size of this uh, leaf would be at least three kilobytes because here we have uh, three items each is of one kilobyte whereas here what we are storing the values here would be just simple integer or uh, floating point numbers which are typically four or eight bytes only okay so once again this is just the key value and this is the full record we're just writing 27 but you should read this as 27 comma student name comma 
student email address, comma, uh, the list of courses the student takes, comma, the list of scores the student has taken from those courses, whatever. So let's continue. So the observations are number one, we store data only at the leaves. And for the sake of simplicity, in our case, all leaves were at the same level. Uh, the interior uh, and the exterior nodes have different data structures for because for the case of interior nodes, we need to be able to store a small key value and two pointers. Whereas for the case of exterior nodes, the leaves, it's an array of records. Uh, all search paths have the same length because all leaves are at the same level. If not, if the leaves are not at the same level, then the search paths would have slightly different lengths. And uh, that length would be log base 2 of n, because that was the height of the tree, remember. And since log base 2 of n could be a real number, we're taking the ceiling of that. Uh, and this is true if we assume that uh, we have one element per leaf. Later we will put, uh, and actually also in the previous figure, we have put multiple elements uh, for per leaf. So uh, this is, here n is actually not the number of elements, but it is the number of leaves. And uh, we have already stored several data elements in a single leaf. So MV3 is a generalization of what we have already discussed. What we discussed was what we call a two-way tree, where m is equal to 2, in other words. So we called either a two-way tree or an m way tree of order 2. So uh, m is actually the number of subtree pointers we have. In, in other words, it's the number of children out of a single uh, interior node. So if a, a node has m uh, pointers, m children, then m minus 1 keys is sufficient because uh, between uh, m items, you have m minus 1 interfaces uh, connecting them. As m increases, now the height of the tree is not log base 2 of n anymore, but it is log base m of n. Uh, so as m gets larger, this uh, value gets smaller before the height decreases, which implies, remember, at every level I had to go to the disk once again, so it would imply uh, less disk access, which means faster operation. Uh, if we have an m way tree, uh, which means, remember, each node has m children, so if you have an m way tree where the height is h, then the number of leaves we would have in total uh, would be m to the h. That would be the limit on the number of leaves uh, if you use all of them. So for example, let's uh, look at uh, the following figure, which we have in the next slide. This is actually what we, the same tree, equivalent actually, not the same, but it's an equivalent tree to what we had earlier. Note that here in each interior node, you had single, key, therefore you had two pointers. Once again, you have a single value, single key, therefore number of keys plus one pointer. So it's one key and two pointers. And the number of levels, excluding the leaves, if you just look at the number of levels for the tree with the interior nodes, we have one, two, and three levels. Same set of values, if you try to represent it with an m way tree of order tree, then you would have uh, two keys this time per interior node. Therefore, we would have rather than two, we would have three pointers because we have three children. And the number of levels was, remember in the previous one, it was three levels. Now we have only two levels for the part with interior trees, plus one level for the uh, leaves similarly. So, uh, increasing the order here has actually uh, decreased the number of levels we have. How many leaves do I have? I have 
two, four, six, eight leaves. Actually, I could have one more leaf here. But at the moment, there's nothing to put there. Therefore, this link is currently null. And the key here is empty. We don't use it yet because we don't need it. At the moment, the items we're storing are here. We're storing 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 18, 19, 21, 24, 27, 30, 34, and 42. Same as the three we had earlier. But to store them, for me, it was enough to have one, two, three, and four interior nodes. But this time, the nodes, the interior nodes are larger. Here, I'm storing one additional key and one additional uh, pointer link. Okay. So this is, uh, as I said, equivalent to the previous three, but this time with a larger m value, where m is equal to three. Therefore, the number of levels has decreased by one, which is something I like because uh, I need, for example, if I want to access, say, the va value 19, I would compare 19 against 12. 19 is larger. So it's either this link or this link. So I need to compare also against 20. 19 is less than 20, so it's not this one. It's this one. So I follow the middle link, which takes me to the middle interior node here in level one. And again, what I was searching for was remember 19, which is greater than 15. So also compare against 18 here. It's also greater than 18. So I follow this link and that takes me to this node, which contains the record for student 19. Now, note that in this one, I had two memory accesses to get to the correct uh, leaf, which requires an additional memory access to get the leaf itself. So I have one, two, three memory accesses. Whereas in the case of, uh, in the case of the previous three, I required to find 19. One compares, uh, one memory access here for this node, second memory access, third memory access, and now the fourth memory access for this one. So it's one more memory access uh, for that tree. The total number of leaves, uh, as I said, could be nine, but we don't use the last one at the moment because we don't need it. We don't have so, so many elements at the moment. Uh, so one way to look at the reduced path length uh, would be by increasing M, as we have seen. Uh, and the number of nodes to be visited uh, to find a leaf in that case would be lower because we have fewer levels. And we will see that when data is stored on the disk, each node visited will require a disk access, as we mentioned. So reducing the number of nodes, actually the number of levels, is essential for us, which improves the performance. One other thing you should note is, uh, remember that the leaves are of the same size so uh, that means a leaf as you can see from the last leaf here can contain four values so there are two available positions here two here two here three here two here two here and one here so there are many available positions actually there is still a place where i can put four values so as you can see in this tree, there is still room for improvement. There's still uh, room for additional records. I could be adding more and more records and this database, uh, sorry, this B3 will be able to store those values. Now, what if these are all full? Then you will have to grow the tree, which we'll come uh, discuss later. But for the moment, this tree still has room for improvement. So how do you uh, do the search? This is a binary search tree, so you decide to go uh, follow which link depending on the comparisons. 
The search, as we discussed, always should terminate at a leaf node because that's where the full record is. You might need to scan more than one leaf, uh, sorry, more than one element at a leaf because when you come here, for example, if what you were searching for was 34, this tree will lead us to this leaf. But when you come to this leaf, you have to find 34 among these four values. You could apply any algorithm here, but typically the number of nodes here will not be very large. So simply a linear search, which means comp uh, checking one by one, would be sufficient here, because as I said, the number of nodes here would not be very large. But still, I need to do that. So finding the leaf is not sufficient. After I come to the correct leaf, I should also find what I'm searching for. And one other important thing is, as we discussed earlier, if what you're searching for is less than 12, you just follow this link. So we made a single comparison. But if you're, what you're searching for is 19, then I had to make two comparisons. But oh, So in other words, I was comparing against both of the keys here. If m is larger, I will have, remember, m minus 1 keys here. So for example, if m is 4, I will have three keys. So sometimes I would be comparing against a single key, sometimes against two keys, and sometimes against three keys. So there is a trade-off. The trade-off is between the height of the tree, which decreases as m increases, which is great. However, as m increases, then I know I have m minus 1 keys, so I may need up to m minus 1 comparisons. Also, the size of the interior nodes will increase because I will have to store here m minus 1 keys and m pointers. So for large m, uh, the interior node size increases, which is bad. Also, the number of comparisons I need to make will increase, which is also bad. However, the depth will decrease, which implies disk access. So for large m, this time I have fewer disk access. We said disk access is most, more costly, significantly more costly compared to CPU operations. So comparisons are done in the CPU. Disk accesses are done with the disk. Since disk access is slower, typically I would be preferring, I would be more inclined uh, to have more keys, but there will be a limit for that. And that's what we are going to discuss uh, in a few slides. This is the algorithm, uh, which is quite simple. If the node you're visiting is null, that means you couldn't find what you are searching for. You have finally come to a null pointer and still you couldn't find it. If not, if the node you're looking at is a leaf, then you do a search within that leaf for that element. Again, you can find it or maybe not. Okay, But this search would typically, as I said, a linear search simply would be enough here. If after this operation, if uh, the variable found becomes true, which means if you find it, you make found it true and otherwise you make it false. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, you can just, uh, if uh, V is an interior node, then you keep on searching in a recursive manner. So the search algorithm would be working as follows. We already discussed this, so I will be fast. What you're searching for, you compare your search key with the first key you have here. If it's less, you follow this link. If it's greater than this key, you compare against the next key. If it's smaller, then it should be in between, therefore you follow this link. Otherwise, it should be in this link, which is the default case, if it's larger than anything. So you will be going this way. So you will have to make one or two comparisons here. As I said, if it's larger, it could be more. And finally, uh, this will lead you through these, uh, this tree of interior nodes. And finally, it will take you to a leaf node. When you come there, you do a linear search. If you find it, fine. If not, that means that value is not in the tree. 
one other thing we should note in here is the following first of all if what i'm searching for is equal to the key it's like if what you're searching for is smaller follow this thing otherwise go here therefore equality also takes you to the link to in the right in other words if you're searching for 18 you should be following this link okay this is just where you add equality is it a less than or equal or greater than or equal we're using the greater than or equal that's not a big deal the more important thing is now if you look at the leaf nodes since you came to this leaf node the leftmost leaf node from this pointer here anything you have in this leaf node should be less than this uh, key value all you will find here will be starting from this key value until it's less than this key and what you find in here will be starting from this key value until well there's nothing to the right therefore smaller than this key value so in other words here you will find anything less than 10 here you find anything between 10 and 12 here you will find anything between 13 and 17 because we have 18 here so here we have from 18 to 21 here from 22 to 27 and here from 28 till 31 here you will have from following this link you will have from 32 to 38 and here you will have anything greater than 39 because we don't have the other value here so that's also the range of values you should be finding in the leaves this is an mway tree where we have more nodes uh, more values this time sorry uh, so this uh, time m is equal to four therefore i have three keys and four pointers so from the root i have four children i have again a level of two excluding the uh, exterior nodes so we will not be considering these exterior nodes or the leaf nodes when we're talking about the levels so i have two levels here and the same idea applies as we discussed earlier so now is it worth Reducing the height of the search tree by letting M increase. Well, we said having larger M meant having fewer levels, which meant running faster. But this will not go infinity. M will not be infinity. Okay. So although the number of nodes uh, visited dec uh, decreases, the amount of computation I need to do at each node increases because when M gets larger, I have m pointers and m one m one sorry m minus one keys to compare against so there is some payoff up to some point so let's see that let's look at an example about this let's assume we have 10 million items so we're really talking about a very large tree this is something like a database now we have 10 million items and we would like to keep it say either in a balanced binary search tree like avl3 or whatever a balanced binary search tree or another engineer comes with the idea of using an mway tree of order say 10 m is equal to 10. so in your company you have two engineers who come up with different ideas one says let's use balanced uh, binary search trees and the other one says it, let's go with an uh, 10 way tree okay so if we analyze the performance of the first engineer's proposal if we use a binary balanced binary search tree we will have log n uh, items uh, uh, sorry the, uh, the depth of the tree will be log n let me correct it okay so that would define at maximum how many hops i would need to reach a leaf which means to find the element what i'm searching for so if i find log base 2 of 10 million 
it is approximately 24. Okay, that implies I need 24 disk accesses since I cannot store such a large tree with 10 million elements in the memory. I will have to write it to the disk. It will be in different parts of the disk, so it requires 24 disk accesses in the worst case to find what I'm searching for. If I follow the idea of the second engineer, then I have to take log base 10 this time. Why? Because it's an m by 3 where m is 10. So I take log base m of n, remember, so here m is 10, so log base 10 of uh, 10 million, which is equal to 7. So that means in, if I follow the second uh, engineer's approach, I will need only 7 disk accesses, which is much faster. And this is true. If I store one record per leaf, if I can store more uh, records per leaf, it will run better. For example, if I have larger leaves where I can store, say, 10 elements in one leaf, then, remember, this should be actually not the number of elements, but the number of leaves. So it would be 10 million divided by 10, which is 1 million. And if you take log base 10 of that, that would be 6. So I would have one less uh, disk access. In the uh, binary search tree, just one comparison would be sufficient for each node. However, now, since I have MV3, it has 10 links and 9 keys in it in each interior node. So in the case of the 10 way tree, at each node, I can have up to nine comparisons. Note that I say up to nine. That's the worst case. In some interior nodes, one or two or three comparisons should, could be sufficient. But in some, it might go as bad as nine. So how can this be uh, worth the price? Only if it somehow takes longer to go down the tree than to make extra computation, it is worth that, like disk access. Going down the tree, descending down the tree, would imply a new disk access versus extra computation is comparisons in the CPU. So in that case, it's sufficient. So this is exactly what we have in the case of a B tree. Compared to the disk time, we said extra computation co uh, comparisons are cheaper, so we can reduce the number of accesses by arranging M to a large value. But there are other things we should be careful with. In engineering, there is always a limit. You should look at the disk block size and the record size. So let's uh, we will be discussing on that. Uh, just to uh, explain very fast. You read from your hard disk in blocks. That means you, if you want to read, let's say, seven bytes from the disk, you don't actually read seven bytes. The disk works with blocks. So a block size is typically one or several kilobytes. So you want to read seven bytes. What the operating system will do for you is it will read, say, two kilobytes of block. If uh, the disk block size is two kilobytes, it will read two kilobytes of data into the system buffers and give you seven out of it. But it does its operations in blocks. And there's a reason for that. We'll be discussing that in more detail in CN322 in the operating systems course. So I will not go to that detail at the moment. But from the point of view of the uh, operating system, it is more logical and faster to work with the blocks. So there is a disk block size and you're trying to fit your records in it. So the size of the block and the size of the record is important because that determines how many records you can fit in a block. Anyways, uh, if we look at a generic implementation, uh, the uh, definition for an MV3 node, for a single node, this could be one approach. 
later we'll see that actually we do something different but just to give you some idea you can for example have one boolean but which shows whether this is a leaf node or an interior node because remember the data structure of a leaf node which is here which is just an array of objects and data structure of an interior node was quite different so that the boolean flag shows which type this node is from and if it's a leaf then you have uh, the uh, value of m which is actually showing the size of that uh, list or array whatever uh, but you're not using probably all of them so n keys would be how many of these are used so m minus n keys would give you how many available positions you have in that and you have an array list of that or maybe it is not a leaf if this is false in that case you need a pointer for each child so you need an array of pointers where the size is the number of nodes what's the number of nodes what's the number of children well we know it's m so we create an array of size actually m but of course again not all children could be uh, there so n elements uh, would be showing the number of uh, elements and you can have a data structure for that uh, a b3 of order m is therefore as we discussed it's an m way tree the root is either a leaf or has between 2 to m sub trees now this case where the root is the leaf very rarely happens actually th this would happen when you have just created a database in the very beginning there will not be many records in the database so all the records you have you just have a couple of records they will fit in a single leaf which would be the whole tree so the root would be that leaf but soon you would have more elements which will not fit in the leaf and as you will see we will have to create more leaves but then you need a structure that shows you the correct leaf which is the tree of interior nodes so typically you will not be in this one but we be with this one so the root typically has 2 to m subtrees remember m was anyways the upper limit on the number of children so at most it's m subtrees it's typically between 2 and m subtrees all interior nodes uh, except maybe for the root have between m over 2 and m subtrees which means you would like to keep the interior nodes at least half full in other words if you uh, a, a, an interior node can have up to m subtrees so whatever m is you should not have less than half of it as your children if so if some interior node needs to have fewer subtrees we will take care of that we will merge it with others as you will see also all leaves are at the same level as we discussed earlier and the leaf when you look at a single leaf again the leaves should also be at least half full so if in a leaf you can put at most l data elements we don't want it to be less than half full if so again we will do merging so let's see let's look at an example we will in next figure here we have an a, a b3 where m is equal to 4 so we have three keys therefore and four pointers and l is equal to 3 which means in a leaf you cannot put more than three elements in this example this is uh, by the way where did this l limit come from it's just it just depends on how i have designed my system i could have made it 10 or 20 doesn't matter the, the important thing the limit typically there is all of this leaf should be in a single disk block so it depends on my disk block and the size of these records for example if my disk blocks this time assume it is four kilobytes 
and my data records um, are one kilobyte, then that means I can fit only four elements in a single disk block, in a single leaf. So in that case, L would be four. But for example, if I reduce the number of bytes required for the data records from one kilobyte down to half a kilobyte, 0 .5, 0 0.5 kilobytes, then in the same leaf, I could be uh, storing eight records. There, L would be eight. So the value of L, in other words, is not related to the number of keys or pointers you have here. It's related to the size of the disk blocks and the size of the individual records stored in those disk blocks. So in this example, that's three for some reason. Our uh, records were that large. A Drood can have between, therefore, M is the upper limit uh, so it should be at least half full, so it's between 2 and 4. And each other interior node, again, should have between 2 and 4 subtrees. And since M is 4, we will have 3 keys, we know that. And each exterior node can, remember, the upper limit is 3, so half of it uh, would be 1.5, you take the ceiling of that, to the uh, to get a, a whole number, so you can have uh, between two and three data elements per uh, leaf. So here's an example three. So we have two levels, three keys in each uh, interior node, and four outgoing uh, pointers. Therefore, for children, as you can see, the key here is not used. Also, not here also not here. So we have five keys that are not used yet. Therefore, we don't have any pointers, which means we can actually still add five more uh, leaves in this tree. Also, we have some openings in some of the leaves, some free spaces. Okay. Now, we will continue on this tree and we'll be adding and removing elements into this. Now, into this tree, uh, we would like to be adding more elements. Recall that the Mway trees are often uh, used when there uh, too many, uh, there's too much data to fit in memory. Therefore, we put uh, the leaves and the nodes in the disk. So each one requires uh, a disk access. And when designing the tree, uh, which is done by choosing M and L, we need to consider the size of the data stored in the leaves and also the size of the leaf, which is determined by the disk block, and the size of the keys and pointers when we're talking about the interior nodes. So, again, let's look at an example. Suppose we want to set up a B3 about students. So we're storing information like the name of the student, address, ID, whatever, about the student. In total, let's say one student requires one kilobyte of data to be stored. So our record size is one kilobyte. We need the key, which is typically the student ID, for example. That's eight bytes, according to our assumption. That means in the interior nodes, I need to keep only the ID, which is only eight bytes, but at the least I need to store the one kilobyte record, full record. Also assume that the pointers to the, the links to the children uh, require four kilobytes. Again, that's an assumption given to you. And finally, assume that our disk block is four kilobytes. From here, you can immediately see that I can store four student records in every leaf, in every disk block. Also remember that the interior nodes should fit into a single disk block. Okay, so uh, what do I have in these interior nodes? Remember what the interior node was like. The interior node was like this. I have one pointer here, key, another pointer, key, another pointer, 
key another pointer so i have like key one key two key three and these are link one link two link three and link four sorry uh, this link four so what's the value of m here m is the number of links don't forget here m is four therefore i have three keys so what would be the size of uh, this interior node if m is equal to four i would have three keys three times what's the size of a key the size of a key was eight bytes remember so three times eight plus four times what's the size of a pointer four bytes okay so this four comes from here and this eight comes from here three is due to the number of keys and this four is due to the number of links and this three and four depend on the m value so that would be what three times eight is 24 plus 16 so this would be 40 bytes now what's the best value of m here what if it's five if it's five then it would be four times eight plus five times four if it's six then it would be five times eight plus six times four so what is the optimal m value how do i find that that's the question now i would like to remember increase the size of m but there is a limit and the limit remember what the limit was the limit was the size of the disk block because the full interior node should fit into a single uh, disk block otherwise you will not be able to read the uh, not the interior node in one operation you would have to read one uh, once for one disk block and then read once again and then you start operations which is too slow that's not what we want you'd like to do it in one shot therefore the upper bound for the size of the interior node would be the uh, disk block size which is remember four kilobytes so in general remember what's the number of uh, keys i have i have m minus one keys the key size was remember eight bytes plus number of links was m this time times the link size was four this should be less than or equal to my disk block size and that's what you're going to see now so if you look at the calculation first of all we said our disk block size was four kilobytes and the student record each one was one kilobyte so just divide it and we don't want half uh, records half being uh, we don't want records half of it being in one disk uh, block the other half in another disk block therefore we are taking the not this time the ceiling but the floor of it because we don't want partial uh, student records being uh, stored we don't want a, a student record being spread over multiple disk blocks that's why we take uh, the number of full data records which would be in this case four anyways in this case this is exactly four but if for example the size of the data record was not 1024 but if it was thousand when you divide 4099 by thousand that would be 4.096 but again you would take the floor and take it as four we, as i said we don't want to spread it over multiple uh, disk blocks because it's slower to achieve it how do we calculate m actually we've just written the formula we had earlier this is 
Oops, sorry. Uh, this is remember the four here is the link size that was four bytes, and eight here is the uh, ID or the key size with m uh, links and m minus one keys. That was the idea, and this was the disk block size. Okay, from there we find that m should be less than or equal to 342 so we would like to have the largest possible m therefore we take the maximum possible value which is 342 what does that mean i'm talking about an m way tree of degree 342 or in other words i'm talking about interior nodes where you have it's like key link link key link key going this way and finally remember you have key and the last one was a link we're talking about 342 links and 341 keys in a single interior node or to put it the other way around if you look at the trees we were uh, drawing here you would have 341 such values and 342 such links in a single node each of these nodes interior nodes would be that way okay i know that sounds very uh, strange but this is according to uh, the uh, parameters we had in this example this is the best b3 you would have it would be so wide and so shallow that you can find what you're searching for very easily it's very difficult to draw uh, on paper or on the screen but the performance would be superb so if you look at the performance of such a tree where m is equal to 342 the height of the tree would be if we have n students in our university and if we have, if we're able to store l student records in every leaf the number of leaves we would have would be n over l which doesn't have to be a, a, an integer value a whole number therefore we take the ceiling of that that would be showing us the uh, maximum number of uh, leaves we would have that number of leaves log base m which is 342 so for example imagine a university where you have 100,000 students just to give you an idea at Boston University we have 16,000 students only 100,000 students is really a very very large university like the open university in uh, Eskişehir Andolu uh, University uh, only in such places you have 100,000 students even for a, such a large number uh, if you take m to be 342 you would require only two disk accesses to find the correct uh, uh, to find the correct leaf and one more disk access to get the leaf itself so in two accesses i find which leaf i should read and one more disk access to read the leaf itself so in three disk accesses i can find where it is even if i have such a huge database that's a nice thing about uh, the v trees Now, how do you do insertion uh, into B3? Let's say we are trying to insert a value X into uh, the B3. Now we should we should first find into which leaf we are going to find uh, we are going to insert X. That's simple. You know, just uh, apply the ideas of a search tree. It will lead you to the correct uh, leaf. So go to that leaf and look at the leaf. Do you have room to insert a new element? If the leaf is not full, 
Because remember, L is the maximum number. So if you have fewer than L elements, just write it there and you're done. That's it. However, if the leaf is full, now you cannot insert another element because you cannot tolerate more than L elements in that leaf. So what you do is you create two leaves. Okay. You, so you split that leaf into two. And uh, each leaf has half of the elements. Okay. So that means create a new leaf and move the second half of those L leaves to the second one. And insert X into the appropriate one, depending on the value of X among those other elements in, the, in those two leaves. Write X there. And you have to go and update the keys in the parent. If the parent node is already full, remember the parent node is an interior node. If it's already full, split it in a similar way. And that might cause a split in the upper layer, which might cause another split all the way. It is possible that that might trigger, in the worst case, the root also to split. And that's the only case where when you split the root and create two nodes out of it, then th you should merge those two nodes with a parent. So this is the only way the tree will have an additional level, so the height increases. Otherwise, the height will not increase. So let's see examples of this. Now, we are given this tree and we want to insert 33 into the tree. Now, compare 33 against 22. It's larger, smaller than 36, so I should be following this link. Okay. So come here, another disk axis, read this node and compare 33 against 26, larger. Compare against 32, larger. There is no other key, therefore it should be in this link. Follow this link and get retrieve this leaf. That's the third disk access. Now that I've read the leaf, I have to insert 33 here. Now what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to insert 33 in between. So 33 will be inserted in between, which means, in fact, this becomes 33 and 34 is shifted here. Okay. Once I do it, of course, I should do another disk access to write this back on the disk. Okay. Because I made the modifications in the memory. So write it back to the disk and I would be done. That's how we would insert 33. Okay. That's a simple case. So this explains how it's done. And this is the result. After inserting 33, we have this. Okay. Now, into this tree, where 33 is inserted, we try to insert 35. Now, let's see. Again, we 35 is less than 36, so it should be inserted to the same uh, leaf here. But this time, 35 will not fit here. So what we're going to do is we will create, so, oh, sorry, we will replace this node with two leaves. Uh, I'm really bad in drawing, so let me just redraw in neat manner. Now, remember what we had here. We had 32, 33, 34, and 35 is to be inserted, so it comes to the end. So these will be placed in one leaf, and these will be placed in the other one. So, of course, I put the smaller ones here, and the larger ones here. Okay? So, this is pointing this one, because this... A new one has replaced this one. Okay. And now this link, which was earlier null, that one points here. And what should I write in here? Remember, in this leaf, you have anything between 22 and less than 26. So from 22 to 25.
here 26 to 31 here so here from 32 anything less than 34 so the key here should be 34 okay oops sorry maybe this is the result let's see if really what the uh, the result was like that so going to the solution here yes it is 32 and 33 are here 34 and 35 are here and the key here says anything between 32 and less than 34 should be here anything greater than or equal to 34 and less than 36 isn't here so everything is fine now from this tree we will continue now i want to insert 21 let's see 21 would go 21 would go in here see 21 is less than 22 so i should follow this link greater than 18 follow this one so 21 should come here but i cannot put four values again i will have to split this into two okay so i have 18 and 19 and 20 and 21. now this link from now on points here points to this one i need a link pointing to the second node i've created but th there is no place to put it that is the problem so when we want to do that the parent where i'm going to put the key and uh, the link is large so i must split also the parent okay so the root gets updated but this would give us uh, give the root with five subtrees which is not allowed so the root must also be split so let's see once again this would require sorry adding a new key here and also a link which is not allowed therefore i have to split this into two okay so in other words i should have one node like this and another one like this okay however this would require i have links here but that would mean adding one more key in the root but the root itself is full so that means splitting the root now i should have a root with say 22 and 36 another one here with 48 and something but then I need something that merges them. So this is the problem and the solution is as follows. Now see, I have created two new leaves. So I have placed, this was, this is the guy who caused all this problem okay now remember this was causing the uh, previous or the parent here the parent here this parent uh, sorry this parent that contains 6 12 and 18 to be split because i couldn't fit it there therefore i need to split that one into two elements which caused the root to be split so i added a new node above the root which caused an increase in the uh, height of the overall tree now how about the values i placed there the idea is actually although it might uh, at first look uh, look complex to you the idea is actually quite simple it works as follows 
uh, what you have what you see following this link now focus on this link i have drawn what you see in this leap should be less than or equal to uh, not equal sorry less than what you see in here or in other words what you see in here should be the smallest value here okay so everything in this left leaf should be less than six and more than something but this is the first one so more than anything okay so uh, anything less than six in other words would be in the first leaf that's a special case because that's a bordered case now for, for the following for all of the following uh, leaves what you see in here would be less than or equal to this uh, sorry greater than or equal to this value and less than this so in other words this link means the values are uh, sorry let me uh, correct this the values are between 6 and 12 6 inclusive 12 exclusive okay the values here would be between 12 inclusive and less than now look at the key here there's nothing there therefore it comes from here so what you see here would be between 12 and 18 12 inclusive 18 exclusive what you see here uh, would be uh, therefore uh, uh, what you see here in this uh, leaf would be therefore see how did I come here I came here through first this link and then this link this link implied it should all be between 18 and 22 okay therefore what i see here should be definitely less than or equal to 18 and the upper bound here would be 20 and for this one let me write it here it would be 20 less than or equal to upper bound would be 22 this is not used so there are no these two pointers are not used similar is here always follow how you came here you came here over this therefore it should be less than 36 definitely and because of this so i know it's less than 36 and definitely greater than or equal to 22 because i'm following this so 22 greater then or equal to so it should be between 22 and 36 and when i come here it is still valid that it's between 22 and 36 but there is an additional constraint so this should be between 22 and 26 so this ruling is true for all of these but because of this an additional uh, Restriction is imposed here for this one, for example, it would be between 26 and 32 and between 32 and 34 and between 34 and 36 in this one and goes this way. Sorry. Uh, just give me okay here we go how about the deletion uh, first you find the leaf you would like to delete and if that leaf is uh, still uh, full enough which means even after deletion the number of elements in the leaf is 
not less than half of the elements, then it's fine, just write it back because you've done any modification. Write that uh, block back to the disk and we're done. And also you should be, of course, updating the keys because you have made some change. However, if deleting node has made that node uh, be less than half full, then you borrow an element from one of the neighbors, either from your left neighbor or from your right neighbor. So from the left, you would be borrowing the largest value. From the right, you would be borrowing the smallest value so that the ordering is not broken. However, now first of all, if you can survive this way, don't forget to make change in the tree also, in the ancestor, because uh, the borders have not changed because you have moved an element from one uh, leaf to another. But also, if the neighbor would become empty, too empty, that, but by uh, too empty, we mean less than half full. We don't mean completely empty. But if borrowing an element from your neighbors, either left or right, makes uh, them too empty, then you should be merging those two leaves into one. And when you do that, again, don't forget, this would mean a modification in the parent, in the interior node. Now, that might have some implications. Sometimes that might also mean removing some elements there, so you might also need to do some merging there. So this combining requires the parent to be updated, which may now have too few subtrees because maybe you deleted an element, fine, delete another one, delete another one. The leaves have become empty, so you merge them. So the number of keys has dropped when you merge them. This way, the parent node, the interior node, has also got a little bit more uh, empty now because a key has been deleted. And if you keep on deleting keys from those interior nodes, at some point, the interior nodes will also have too few keys, which might require them to be combined together with another interior node. And this will reflect all the way to the, towards the parent. But this way, uh, as we discussed here in deletion and earlier in insertion, what we're doing is we're actually uh, changing the tree here. It's either growing or shrinking, but note that not every growth or not every deletion implies a level change in the tree. The keys might change, the number of keys might change, but uh, the increase in the number of levels or the decrease would be very rare. But if that happens, it happens. You could just grow or shrink a B tree. There are ways of doing this as we have seen. So this concludes this section and also the chapter on trees.